Hi there, in this video, first, we'll have a short introduction to HMI. Then, during a simple project, we'll learn how connection settings can be set by Easy Builder 8000 software, and also how an HMI screen can be designed. Finally, a short review of the Delta PLC and ISP soft course will be told. Before we get started with today's video, I just wanted to inform you about all the great content we have been releasing on the PLC Goods YouTube channel, which includes industrial automation PLC programming, HMI, and microcontroller based developments. My name is Syed Reza, and if you enjoy this video, I would appreciate it if you could click the subscribe button as well as the notification bell, to receive the latest and the greatest content, I will be posting through the channel. Let's start the video. If you remember, this pyramid was explained at the beginning of the first video. Until now, we've learned how a Delta PLC can be programmed to control industrial processes. In this video, I'm going to program and use an HMI beside my Delta PLC. As you know, HMI stands for Human Machine Interface. It's typically used to describe such screens used in industries, which display real time data and allow a user to control an industrial process, using a graphical interface. Well, like the previous videos, a USB cable will be used to connect my PLC, to my computer. Note that, my HMI has different ports. I will use its USB port to connect it to my computer, and I will use RS485 communication protocol, which uses two wires, to share data between the HMI and PLC. As you know, my Delta PLC can be programmed by ISP Soft. Then, I will use Easy Builder 8000 software to program my HMI. Note that the connection settings between the HMI and PLC will be defined inside Easy Builder 8000 software. If you remember, during a video with this link, I used this simple program. Based on the program, I can use the first digital input x0 and also the first memory address m0 to turn on the first digital output remember factory io software couldn't change the state of real input addresses like x0 because it couldn't change appeared voltage or current on the related terminal so we had to use memory addresses like m0 to command my plc from the factory io software similarly I will need to use memory addresses like M1, to turn on an output with HMI. Also, other data types like numbers can be shared between the PLC and its connected HMI. Now, I'm writing a simple program, to add two numbers together. The first one can be changed by the first potentiometer, and the second will be changed by the HMI. Later, I will explain how these numbers, and also the result, can be shown on the HMI. Remember, to activate the first potentiometer with this address, I must enable its special bit memory, M1178. OK, the program has been complete. Now, let me select appropriate tags for these data registers. Note that, there are several ways or objects inside the HMI, to change and display data. I will use a slider to change the stored number in D0, and a bar graph to display the result. Now, let's transfer the program to my PLC. Now, let me launch Easy Builder 8000 software. I'm going to use the software to design my HMI screen. Note that, each HMI has its individual designing software, but basic concepts are the same for all of them. Therefore, if you learn how to work with an HMI very well, you will be able to work with others easily. Well, let's create a new project. Here, 
my HMI model and also its display mode, have been selected correctly. Let's continue. Well, this window, System Parameter Settings, has been appeared automatically. Inside this window, we can determine the connection settings between the HMI and other PLCs. By default, there is a connection with the HMI memory, but I need my PLC data. So, let's click here to create a new connection. Well, my HMI can connect to a variety of PLCs from different companies. Let me find Delta Company and then select my PLC type. In this project, I've used the RS485 port to make a connection between my PLC and HMI. So, let me select it. Another important parameter is the PLC station number. Note that, if multiple PLCs are connected to the same network, each PLC must have its own unique number. By default, my PLC station number is 1, but it can be changed by D1121. Alright, the new connection has been created. Now, I can use my PLC data, inside the HMI. Let's continue to design a simple HMI screen. Well, this area will be displayed on my HMI. I can use these icons to design an HMI screen. Let's start with this one, Bitlamp. It can be used to show the state of a bit address of my PLC. So, let me select the appropriate connection, and then select Y0. Thus, the inserted object will display the state of the first digital output. Other settings help us to insert the new object with a suitable shape, color, and size. Well, another object is text. It can be used to insert a simple text. Now, let's insert a toggle switch. It works like switches and push buttons. I'm going to connect it to M1. So, based on my PLC program, it will be able to turn on the first digital output. Now, let me select the toggle mode as the switch style. Therefore it will work like a switch. Well, other parameters which determine the shape, color, size, and etc. are arbitrary. You may want not to change them and use default settings. Well, every time we can compile the design screen, to ensure there isn't any error. Before that, the project must be saved. Alright, there wasn't any error or warning. Let's continue. Inside the PLC program, D1178 has been used. Its value can be changed by the first potentiometer. Let me use a meter display on the HMI screen, to display its value. As you saw in the previous videos, the potentiometer value can be changed between 0 and 255. Let me define this range here. Now, let me connect this new object to D1178. Well, let me use the previous text, to add a suitable title for the inserted meter display. Well, let me enable the scale label. Again, let me add another text, to display plus sign.
Now, let me use a slider to change D0 value. First, let's connect it to D0, and then, specify its range. Note that, other settings are arbitrary, but help us to insert a slider, with an appropriate shape, color, and size. Now, I'm going to use a bar graph, to display the stored result in D1. As you see, the properties such as the range and color of any object can be modified. Note that, some objects such as sliders, have to be linked to an address, which is their most important feature. Well, this part of the HMI screen is related to the first network of my PLC program, and this part is related to the second network. So, let me separate them with a line. Finally, let me click on the picture icon, to add PLC Goods logo. Alright, I've designed my HMI screen. That's simple. Remember, only these objects will need to use my PLC data. Now, let me compile the design screen again, and then, transfer to my HMI. Okay, as I mentioned before, I've connected my HMI to my computer via a USB cable. Now, let me click on download, to transfer the design screen to my HMI. Well, the design screen has been transferred to my HMI successfully, but here is a message which says, HMI has not connected to the PLC. As you can see, my HMI is not displaying some objects such as the slider and toggle switch, which need to use my PLC data. Therefore, I conclude the connection setting between my HMI and PLC is not correct. So, let me open the system parameters settings window, and modify the connection settings. Well, I must select the first RS485 item, not the second one. Let me save the new settings, and after that, compile and transfer my project again. As you see, at this time, the previous message has not appeared, because my HMI is connected to my PLC correctly. Now. Let's run the PLC. Based on the PLC program, I can use the first switch to turn on the first LED. Note that, the inserted bit lamp displays the first LED state. Similarly, 
I can use the inserted toggle switch on the HMI screen, to turn on or off the first LED. As you know, the second network adds two numbers together, and store the result in D1. First, let me change the first number by the first potentiometer. Simultaneously you can see its state on the HMI. Now, let's use the slider on the HMI, to change the stored number in D0. As you know, the bar graph is connected to D1, to display its value. Therefore, if I change either the slider or potentiometer, its level will be changed automatically, based on the stored result in D1. Now, let me exit from the online mode, and connect my PLC to factory I.O., like the previous videos. Note that, only the state of M0 and Y0 will be shared between my PLC and factory I.O., via the OPC server. Ok, let's test the project. Based on the first network of the PLC program, I can use the first digital input, the inserted toggle switch on the HMI screen, and also the push button inside the factory I.O. software, to turn on the first digital output, which is connected to the belt conveyor inside the factory I.O. software, and also connected to the inserted bit lamp on the HMI screen. Well, during this video, I have shown how HMIs can be used besides PLCs to control industrial processes. Now it's your turn to challenge your programming skills, by doing more complex projects. Finally, I would say during this video, a simple HMI project has been done by Easy Builder 8000 software. Also, different softwares have been explained and used during this course, to program my Delta PLC and simulate industrial processes, which can help you to improve your PLC programming skills. Thanks for watching my content, if you have any question on this topic make sure you leave them in the comment section below, and if you can spend a few seconds of your time liking as well as sharing this video, if you enjoyed it, that will mean a lot to me. If you have any suggestions for the channel such as what kind of hardware or software I should be covering, then make sure to leave that in the comment section. See you next time. Bye bye.